The 40th anniversary of high school basketball on Maine Public Television is made possible by... Hammond Lumber Company, a Maine family business serving contractors and do-it-yourselfers with building supplies and custom services since 1953. CN Brown Energy, in business for 70 years. Heating oil and electricity offerings at cnbrownenergy.com. The Maine Education Association is a group that's always going to have my back. People who have a core belief in doing what's best for kids. To make our schools the best they possibly can be. UMA is statewide. With two campuses, eight UMA centers, and 32 course sites, they can help you start or finish your degree and advance your career. Nick Gilpin, he's going to throw the three and good! Count it! My goodness! Now Davis inside. Off to McCormick. McCormick shot and ball net. Well, oh, dear. The guests joining us were approaching halftime and not the end of the game. The auditorium roof was leaking and it took, uh, we got uh, a late start. Tonight are the final two games that will be played at this historic site. Four over three! Oh! From the Cross Insurance Arena in Portland, it's the boys' Class B state final between the Caribou Vikings and the Cape Elizabeth Capers. And good afternoon, game two of the doubleheader here at the Cross Insurance Arena. I'm Dave Cheever along with a new face for you, Brendan Terrell. Brendan, teams from opposite ends of the state with a single goal. Caribou Vikings and the Capers of Cape Elizabeth. Yeah, absolutely. How important is this game for the Caribou community. You see up here behind us, Dave, we're packed to the rafters with Caribou fans from the bottom to the top. Everybody's down here from the whole town of Caribou. I think the whole thing emptied out this afternoon. And on the other side, Cape Elizabeth, their side's filling in as well. We're going to have a great game here this afternoon. Two teams in Maroon out here going to be contesting the Class B Boys State Championship game. And both teams got here with a, a little bit of flourish. Uh, Caribou Vikings on the Bangor Auditorium floor. And Cape Elizabeth Capers came through here, and uh, they both teams tested, but it, it's an opportunity for the Capers to demonstrate that they, in fact, are uh, state championship caliber. Are you okay? Yeah, all right. Uh, along the way, and you mentioned the people behind us uh, from Caribou, there are other people who uh, did not make the trek and they are listening on Channel X Radio out of Caribou. And we wanted to thank them for joining us. Uh, what we see is, is uh, pretty spectacular, and, and we hope that we can somehow translate that to you on what you hear. As the captains have met at, their, at this, and we have standing by with our floor reporter, Brian Seidling, Seidlinger, the uh, head coach of the Caribou Vikings, Kyle Corrigan. That's right, Dave. I'm here with Coach Corrigan. Coach, thank you for joining us, first of all. You told me you came down yesterday. Caribou's a long way from Portland. Yeah, it's quite a trek to get down here. We came down yesterday, got settled in. The guys had a lot of fun last night, so we're, we're at work right now, though. Uh, what do you see out of Cape Elizabeth? You've had a week to prepare. They're big. Uh, they're a lot bigger than we are. They, they do a good job at controlling the tempo in their game. So, you know, we, we got different styles, I think. We're a little bit smaller, so we're going to have to do a really good job rebounding the basketball against them. All right, Coach, good luck. Thank you very much. Dave, we'll go back to you, see if we can grab that other coach. Thank you, Brian. Uh, Jim Ray will be right around. I'm, I'm pretty sure he knows the drill by now as the veteran coach has brought the Capers here any number of times as the, uh, this is a home court advantage for him in a way. The Vikings come in here as uh, a team with a proud heritage. It's some of the greatest things that, uh, that we've seen and going back to my youth. Uh, Caribou Vikings have played outstanding basketball, and uh, it's good to see them here, good to see them uh, resurgent as a uh, little trip down from the county. It's good for everybody. And Jim Ray is heading down to speak with uh, Brian Seidlinger as uh, we're getting ready for action here. We've got about five minutes of warm-ups. For those of you just joining us, the Grey New Gloucester Patriots defeated the Mount Desert Island Trojans this afternoon with the girls' class B. 
Jim Ray is now standing with Bry. Brian Seidlinger, take it away. Hey, that's Thank you, Dave. That's right. I am here with Coach Ray. Coach, congratulations. Real quick, I know the, the boys are warming up here. What do you see out of Caribou? You had a week to prepare? They're very, very athletic. And they got five guys on the floor all the time. You can put the ball in the basket, put the ball on the floor. So it's a tough cover. How, you've been here before. What would you say this week of practice was like? Uh, a grind, particularly for the kids that haven't been through this experience before. Um, so uh, we had a full day, a full week of, of practice. Um, right back to the basics, nothing fancy. We're going to try to do what we do best. All right, Coach, thank you very much. All Good right. luck tonight. Dave, that's it from the floor. We'll go back to you. Thank you, Brian. One of the things that uh, Jim Ray doesn't say is that he does have sort of a big advantage, doesn't he? He's very big. Andrew Hartel, all six foot nine of him. He's a big advantage heading into any game, especially against Caribou, who is going to find it difficult to contend with that kind of size inside. Well, sometimes the uh, the plan is to attack a kid like uh, who has such a height advantage on you, maybe get him into foul trouble, but. Uh, the depth that Jim Ray has to, to work with, Hartel did, was not a dominant figure uh, when when Cape had to go elsewhere, and they found ways to win even when he wasn't at his best. That's the other advantage that Cape has coming into this game is their depth. They are able to go a little deeper into their bench. Caribou, on the other hand, they're very reliant on their starting five. Their sixth man is a freshman, and they really only like to go six, maybe seven deep. So we'll see if depth is a factor in the game, as well as the defensive game plan for Caribou, which has to start and end with defending the big guy inside. Um, we were remarking on the way down uh, this morning that Caribou rounded into form with the arrival of a, of a kid who's now currently a junior, uh, Isaac Marker, as uh, he is balanced out with Parker Dupree and Austin Finland, and uh, he's provided that one extra kid that can, you know, next thing you know, everything that you seem to want to do is working. That's right, Isaac Marker moved to Caribou from Utah with his family last year, and he's just been the perfect addition to round out that starting five. You see the starting five, they're not super tall, not super big, but I've been amazed throughout the tournament with their ball movement and the way that they play together. That ball will whip around the court back and forth and open up gaps in the defense for Caribou to take advantage of when they're going right. And if they're going right to start early in this game, you'll see the ball really whipping around the court here pretty quickly. For those of you who didn't see the uh, Northern Maine tournament, Parker DeBray had a uh, <laughs> had a week. He uh, he was all over the floor for the Caribou Vikings, and uh, he and uh, his brother Sawyer, uh, they uh, they were pests out there. <laughs> they they had uh, a number of offensive exploits, and of, of course. You know, if you're not going to be playing more than six, seven kids, uh, the stamina for these guys was tested and their judgment because they could not afford to get into foul trouble. Foul it trouble could be a big factor in today's game. And you're right, the Dupre brothers are the backbone of this Caribou team. Parker Dupre put Caribou on his back in the regional final and their defeat of Herman to end, get this Dave, Herman's 42 game win streak Caribou snapped in the regional finals to earn their trip here. It was led by the Dupre brothers, Parker and Sawyer. They go after each other so hard day in and day out in practice up in Caribou and make each other better. Um, I'm looking at the other end of the court too. This, uh, the Capers come in here and as you said, they have a deeper team. And when you begin with a kid who's 6'9", and then you realize, all right, when he leaves the floor, you're still out there doing well. It's, uh, we have a couple of sportsmanship banners to give out here, and we're going to be heading to that momentarily as the Cape Elizabeth Band is treating us at the far end. Well, it's been 50 years on one side, Dave, since Caribou has won a gold ball, since Mike Thurston shot her around the state. On the other side, Cape Elizabeth has had a run of excellence recently. They won a gold ball as recently as 2015 over Madomic Valley. So Cape just trying to extend this run of excellence they've had in B-South, while Caribou is trying to do something that no team from, uh, from Caribou has done in 50 years today. I was here for that Madomic game, and uh, it was the amazing ending of that game. Pretty sure Nick DePatsy will remember it for a long, long time probably still has nightmares about it. Mike Salisbury is going to be at the public address position for today's game. And just so you know, 
Nick Raymond, Dan Netto, and Ken Brillant are the officials for this afternoon's contest. And I know I've seen some teams floating around here, and yes, they're just behind the scorer's table. As one of the more important awards, people don't realize it necessarily. They'd like to see the gold ball and everything, but when you, you have a chance to take home a sportsmanship banner, when you're recognized by the other teams whom you play, that becomes a big deal over time as you realize that there are a lot of attributes that are being recognized. And you get a look at Mike, and away we go. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. The Maine Principals Association welcomes you to Cross Insurance Arena for the 2019 Maine High School Invitational Basketball Tournament. This contest is the Boys Class B State Championship featuring the champions of Northern Maine, the Vikings of Caribou High School. And the champions of Southern Maine, the Capers of Cape Elizabeth High School. The Maine Principal Association, along with both Caribou and Cape Elizabeth, strongly advocates the value of good sportsmanship. This means treating everyone with courtesy, cheering for your team and not against the other team, treating officials with respect, and using appropriate language and behavior. The athletes on the court will be giving their best efforts. We ask you give your positive support. Help make this afternoon's game enjoyable for everyone, especially the people around you. The official score for this game is Ellen Durgan, timer, Tyler Berthume, score clock operator David Airy, music coordinator Rich Peterson, on-site trainer Ursula Volkomer Haley. Ladies and gentlemen, your state championship game officials are Mr. Raymond, Mr. Dedo, and Mr. Berlange. We would now like to award the Sportsmanship Award banners. The Maine Principals Association places a significant degree of emphasis on sportsmanship in all MPA-sponsored activities. Each school has an opportunity to vote for the opponent demonstrating what they feel is the highest level of sportsmanship throughout the entire regular season. The MPA defines the essence of sportsmanship as displaying a spirit of fair play and respecting the determination and effort of their opponents and officials. In Southern Maine, Class B boys, the award goes to the Knights of Poland Regional High School. <laughs> Coach Tyler Tracy is joined by his players, Jacob Hodgkin, Andrew Frechette, David Bulldick, Noah Breston, Evan Kelly, Joseph Ringette, Isaiah Hill, Isaac Fifield, Joseph Levesque, Hunter Gibson, and Jay Hawks. Congratulations to the Knights of Poland Regional High School. In Southern Maine Class B girls basketball, we are pleased to recognize the Cape Elizabeth Capers. Coach Chris Castorella, Jeff Mitchell, and Andy York along with players Brooke Harvey, Allison Ingalls, Callie Manning, Say Sailor Wood, Jess Robichaud, Lily Frame, Katie Ledoux, Carly Chapin, Isabel Berman, Allison Garrity, Emily Goulding, Emily Supple, and Addie Whalen. Congratulations to the Capers of Cape Elizabeth High School. Before meeting today's starters, let's first introduce the squad members for each team, starting with the Caribou Vikings. A junior guard, number 10, Cullen Caverhill. A junior guard, number 12, Jacob Berkowski. A senior forward, number 32, Taryn Hand. A sophomore guard, number 40, Ethan Holdsworth. A freshman guard, number 42, Michael Brigman. 
and as senior guard number 54, Iffy Sargent. Now let's meet the squad members for the Cape Elizabeth Capers. A senior forward, number five, Ahmad Hagos. A junior guard, number 12, Jack Bassett. A junior guard, number 14, Liam Concannon. A senior guard, number 15, Kyle Russell. A junior guard, number 20, Vince Inhorn. A senior captain at guard, number 21, Nick Acido. A senior guard, number 24, Aiden Willits. A junior guard, number 30, Nolan Smith. A senior guard, number 33, Sean O'Sullivan. A sophomore guard, number 34, Noah Pillsbury. And a sophomore forward, Finn McQueeny. Now let's meet the starting lineups for both teams. For the Vikings, a 5'10 junior guard, number five, Alex Bouchard. For the Capers, a 5'10 sophomore guard, number three, Nate Mullen. For the Vikings, a six foot one junior captain at forward, number 22, Parker Depre. For the Capers, a five foot 11 sophomore guard, number four, Quinn Moores. For the Vikings, a six foot junior forward, number 24, Isaac Marker. For the Capers, a six foot four senior forward, number 11, Tanner Carpenter. For the Vikings, a six foot sophomore forward, number 30, Sawyer Dupre. For the Capers, a six foot one senior forward, number 23, Matt Conley. For the Vikings, a 5'11 senior captain at guard, number 34, Austin Finland. And for the Capers, a 6'9 senior captain at center, number 32, Andrew Hartel. The head coach for Caribou is Kyle Corrigan, assisted by Jeremiah Fitzhebert, Ben Rosser, and Cody Herbert. The head coach for the Capers is Jim Ray, assisted by Kevin Barr. The MPA would like to thank our corporate sponsors, including AAA Northern New England, Coca-Cola Bottling Company of Northern New England, Life Touch Photography, the Main Bureau of Highway Safety, NFHS Network, Rawlings Sporting Goods, Spalding Russell Sporting Goods, and the University of Maine. This is the Boys Class B State Championship game. It's time for tip. And thank you, Mike. <laughs> Get through all of that. All right, Brandon, here we go, Bob. Hey, I hope the last person out of Caribou this morning turned off the lights, because the entire town is here behind us, Dave. They're floor to ceiling, they're loud, and they're ready to go. Well, I hope they respect that Parker Dupre is not likely to win the tip, and he didn't, as Andrew Hartel at 6'9", gets the tap, Cape with the ball, looking for Hartel. Bring it around to Carpenter. Quinton Morris. Morris, they will be probing here. This is essentially a four guard offense. Yeah, it's a four out, one in. Hartel on the inside. Patient offensive set here, first time down. And just like that, Quinton Morris puts him on the board for three. Quinton Morris, three ball from the corner pocket, knocks it down. Sawyer to pray to Marker. Sawyer, they'll reset the offense. Not sure we'll get into too much racehorse here if they don't have to. Parker Dupre goes baseline. Bouchard loses it. Hartel picks it up. Good double team there on the baseline drive by Alex Bouchard. Earns a turnover for the Cape defense. Nate Mullen gets up the floor. Conley 
Out high again of Quinn Moore, Snow. Hartel with a rebound, puts it back, leaves it short. Up again to Strong, Hartel walks with it, and they're gonna call it a tie-up. So that's job number one for Caribou. Defensive rebounds and box out position as you see the big guy Hartel going up and over for that rebound. Parker Dupre had his hand on the ball and poor, poor Hartel could not get it to move. Marker gives it off to Sawyer Dupre. To Parker. Marker thought for a minute to go to Finland. Now they do in the corner, Finland. And you're gonna get a push foul in there on Matt Conley, I believe. Two, three, yep. See both teams featuring half-court man-to-man defense early on. You see Cape Elizabeth doing a nice job helping and doubling along the baseline on those drives. They got a turnover from Bouchard. Finland, Finland. almost did too. Marker, Parker Dupree. Finds Finland, Finland open for three, no. Ball run down by Knight, Nate Mullen. Gets it ahead to Conley. Looking inside, Hartel, always gonna have an arm above the crowd. The question is whether they can get the ball to him. See Sawyer Dupre front again, and a second defender is keeping a close eye on him. Bouchard watching Morse, knowing Morse will let it fly as soon as he sees daylight. Hartel down low to Conley, leaves it short, put back up and in. Conley cleans up his own mess. Nice bounce pass by the big guy off the double team. Gets the hoop. Parker to pray for three, no. One and done as Tanner Carpenter clears the board. Cape Elizabeth up by five. That ball is going to be short. Marker with it. Has a little bit of running room. Now loses it. Comes to Bouchard. Bouchard pull up and a foul by Nate Mullen. We'll put Alex Bouchard on the line. The Caribou wants to run and score on the fast break. You see Alex Bouchard stops and pops with an elbow jumper. Hand on his elbow, he's gonna earn a trip to the stripe. Puts the Vikings on the board, coming into the game for Cape Elizabeth as Conley goes to the sideline. Number five, Amon Haigas. Bouchard has started since he's been a freshman, now a junior. Two from the line, three-point game. Nate Mullen calls out a play, heads into the front court. Goes cross court to Carpenter. Carpenter in the corner to Morris. Back to Mullen. Carpenter. Parker Dupre watching him. Finland goes for the steal. They go in the corner. It's going to be an open shot. Side of the iron. Finland. Finland on the drive. Puts it up. No good. Good non call there. You see the Vikings' preference to get out and run, but Finland can't finish the deuce. Nate Mullen tried to draw the foul there and was not enough contact to say so. Hartel pushed away from the lane. Nate Mullen with it. They loop it back to Hartel. Hartel, a bit strong, I guess, on the way back, gets fouled. So much attention has to be paid to Hartel around the basket that it opens up the weak side rebounding opportunity for Cape. And Hagas puts it back in, goes to the line. Hagas found nothing with that. Terrible Viking basketball. They trail by seven. Bouchard on the dribble. Marker trailing. Picking up at the half court. Parker Dupree goes to Finland. Finland back to Dupree. You'll hear these names often for Caribou. They do not go terribly deep in the bench. Sawyer Dupree. Cross court to Bouchard. Bouchard, baseline jumper. No. Cartel with the cleanup. Hands it off to Mullen. One and down, done again for Caribou. Another rebound for Hartel. He's racking him up. Well, I got a feeling Jim Ray would be upset if he didn't. Another offensive rebound for Cape. 
Martell makes it look easy. Kyle Corrigan wants a timeout as the Capers move out to a seven point lead as the Vikings are having trouble getting their offense in gear. And meanwhile, giving up too many offensive rebounds to the Capers. Yeah, Caribou so fired up coming into this one. They have so many fans here watching them. They've had so many pep rallies this week, so much community involvement. They probably feel a lot of pressure on their shoulders coming into this game, trying to earn their first gold ball in 50 years. Just gonna settle down, play their game. The high school quiz show main season three is in full swing. I thought you'd like to know that one. 16 teams from across Maine are competing to see who will be this year's champion and head to Boston to take on other quiz show champions from around New England. Tune in Thursdays at 8 to see who takes the crown on Maine Public Television. Austin Finland into the front court for the Caribou Vikings. They trail by seven, they need some points. Bouchard with the ball. Bounce pass back to Finland. Finland, watch by Hagas, not able to take a shot. Bouchard takes it in, it's gonna be a player control foul. As Tanner Carpenter went to the floor and he actually had closed off the baseline. I don't know if they had real any place to go there, Brandon. Yeah, Bouchard drives baseline, and again, Cape Elizabeth, a nice job of help defense, stepping into double every time there's a baseline drive. And Caribou's turned it over a couple times in that situation. Mullen sends Morse away. They want to get the ball to Hartel. They bring it back instead to Carpenter. Reverse it out to the left side. Carpenter, a little bit of room. Let's fly with a three. Rims out. Bouchard. Back on the run for the Vikings. They trail by seven, they need some help. Sawyer, Dupree, puts it up and in. And will go to the line. Reach in foul on Sawyer Dupree. Sawyer Dupree, dribble drive. Open arm. Nice job, starts on one side, floats, finishes on the opposite side of the rim. I think that slap hurt him. Did you see him win? <laughs> wow. Hey, wait a minute. Free throw doesn't go, but wait a basket counts. Five point game. Mullen, Hagas, Morrison Carpenter. I think the entire thing is a, is a four guard offense. With only Hartel really chewing up a lot of ground in the middle. And he gets fouled from behind. I think they're gonna get that on marker. The story of the game so far is Cape offensive rebound. See, that was their second opportunity. Hartel gets a third chance. They're gonna call it sorry to pray instead, Brandon. Even though Marker was backing away going, I... Yeah, Hartel can't get the traditional three-point play. Bouchard, Parker Dupre, been quiet so far. It's not a kid who's gonna stay quiet. Sorry Dupre. Finland, Bouchard in the corner. They're trying to move the ball quickly. Parker for three, yes. Uh, Parker Dupre gets on the board, knocks one down. Maybe that'll get him going. Carpenter flips the ball to Mullen. Mullen decides not to shoot. Hartel well out away from the basket. Mullen, Hartel, Sawyer to pray, guarding him, realizing he literally has a tall task here this afternoon. <laughs> Mullen over to Carpenter. The is listed at six foot even. He's given up nine inches. Hopes to cut down the angle by fronting him. Hartel travels. That's effectively dealt with a triple team in there. Exactly, that's what Caribou wants. They're gonna run and double, even triple team Hartel on the lock. Of course, it's gonna open up the weak side block, but that time didn't matter the traveling violation. Jim Ray calls the timeout now. He wants just a 30. Do you wanna tinker with the offense here, Brandon? I mean, finding Hartel is not that difficult, but maybe getting these other kids to shoot. Yeah, a little more ball movement maybe around the perimeter to open up that post entry pass. They're kind of holding the ball and, and staring down at the big guy inside for a two count before they throw that lob and Caribou knows it's coming. Maybe some more ball movement, some more reversal around the perimeter before that post entry will open that up a little. And the longer that the Caribou Vikings stay close like this, the longer they think, you know what? We're two baskets away from taking a lead. Yeah, a little confidence now building for Caribou. Parker to pray, knock down a three point shot. Maybe he'll start feeling it here. Bouchard on the dribble, comes to Sawyer Dupre, now Parker. 
Parker goes baseline, shut off by Morse. Soria takes it in, goes Bouchard for three. No, Austin Finland on the putback up and in. The loud noise you hear is that town of Caribou behind us. <laughs> Everybody's here. You see the senior Austin Finland make the putback. Parker to Craig, a hand in the pass attempt to Hartel. Vikings retain control. Carpenter directing a little bit of traffic. He brings it to Mullen. Haggis, Hartel calling for it. They let it fly. And Haggis knocks it out of bounds. Diving for it was Hartel. Ill-advised on that. I don't think he would have been able to get it anyway. Hustle point for the big guy, though. Getting on the floor, trying to save it. Jack Bassett getting set to come in for the capers. Bouchard picked up the dribble, kind of a dangerous spot. Marker, pull-up jumper is good. We have a tie game. How about that? Well, all five seniors have scored now for Caribou. Isaac Marker gets into the action. Rise and fire from the foul line. Knocks down a pure jumper. Elon Hagas gets the play call from Jim Ray. Hartel way outside. Now Mullen holding for one here. Haggis comes to Carpenter. I don't think they'd mind if it was Morse at the top. He has the ball now. Two, one, they go inside to Hartel. Okay, there's your option. Count the basket. And the Capers of Cape Elizabeth take a two point lead at the end of the first quarter of play and this the boys class B state championship game. You're watching championship basketball from the Portland Cross Insurance Arena on main public television. The 40th anniversary of high school basketball on Maine Public Television is made possible by Memic, helping keep Mainers safe at work since 1993. Applications now open for the Horizon Scholarship for families of injured workers. Memic.com. What a moment when you find your way to a new home at your local Maine Credit Union. Contact your local Maine Credit Union. It's your moment. Own it. We're ready to start play in the second quarter of action in the Class B Boys State Championship game. Two point game. Andrew Hartel makes a shot at the buzzer to regain the lead for the Capers. They're in the white. Caribou Vikings in their road maroon. They're giving up a lot of inches inside to Hartel. He's got a game high six points in that first quarter. Bassett in the game for the Capers. Mullen puts the ball to the floor, takes the drive, leaves it short. Finland down with a loose ball for the Vikings. Back comes Parker Dupre. Good hustle back by Cape. Sorry, Dupre. Screens it a little. Finland goes in the corner to Bouchard for three. No. Cartel, loose ball. Good ball movement, good possession by Caribou. Ends in a good look. Bouchard can't knock it down. Cartel took a look around because he could hear Isaac Marker. He just couldn't see him. Mullen comes to Carpenter. In the corner to Bassett. They look inside to Hartel because that's what they always do. Andrew Hartel has to work very hard. Yeah, the hands are always up Bid and the body's always being pounded. Andrew Hartel. Oh, um, through a double team there. He wanted a foul, didn't get it. Now he's gonna hustle to pray. back. Elevates and makes. The game tied at 13. Five points for Parker Dupre. Mullen comes left side, loops it into Hartel, steps through the double team, puts it up too strong, and he's gonna be fouled, Dan Neto says, and Hartel will go to the line to shoot two. So that post entry pass came with a better rhythm. Hartel was able to catch it more easily than most law passes here this afternoon. He's gonna step through the double team, pick up the foul. You know, you say he stepped through the double team. It's not as easy as it sounds. Those guys are, and he's a big kid. That's right. The coach just stepped through the double team. Just step just through just it. Just step through it. You Look, can I'm do trying, that. coach. <laughs> That's pure stroke from the line by Hartel. He goes two for two. 
regains the two point lead for the Capers. Southern Maine Class B champions. Finland has to step away from Mullen. Keeps the ball on the dribble. They come inside to Marker. Marker gives off to Finland. Finland. Parker Dupre says send it to Sawyer. Sawyer was open, but not for long. Parker Dupre wants to pitch it back. Gets it to Bouchard around to Sawyer. Sawyer takes it to the basket. A little wide. Comes to Marker for three. Kick out three-pointer, Isaac Marker knocks it down. He's now got five points in the game. Caribou now has the lead for the first time in the game. Hartel still, and going over is Carpenter, and they're gonna say Parker Dupree was the one who has the last fingertip on the ball. So, well, I don't know about that, he said. Bassett comes inside to Mullen, Mullen. Carpenter in the corner, let's fly for three, no, wide. Back comes Bouchard on the run. Gonna take it, down low, off to Finland, too strong, Hartel with a rebound for Kate. A nice bounce pass by Bouchard off the fast break, set up Finland nicely, and then couldn't finish. He might have been expecting company. Yeah, you heard Hartel's footsteps <laughs> I coming. I think he might have. Altered the shot a little bit, just enough. Carpenter steps through and he travels. Carpenter wanted See, the Euro that's step. A, that, but that's the fact of splitting the double team. Yeah, that's he right. Went, went through the two terrible players, but to do so, he picked the ball up and had that extra step. Terrible with the ball in the lead. Sawyer comes to Parker Dupree, now back. Sawyer tries to draw Andrew Hartel away from the circle. Parker Dupree back on Marker. Martel on the steal. Parker Dupre has Bouchard on the cut. Gives to Finland in the corner for three. No. Hartel with a rebound, weak side. The Hartel, he's been on the floor twice today. He's racking up the rebounds. He's a difference maker inside. Interesting attack plan for Cape, or for Caribou rather. As they, they drew Hartel out, and as they got him out, they tried to cut behind him. Move the ball a little quickly that way, and he didn't get points on that one, but I'm pretty sure Jim Ray, because it was right in front of him. See dribble drive by Nate Mullen. Tries to get up and under Finland. But it'll be baseline inbounds for Kate. Carpenter for three. No. Bouchard. He's their point guard, and right now their leading rebounder. Parker Dupre to Sawyer. Sawyer, just a sophomore. Yeah, there was a little chatter going on right after they got here. He's, hey, you know, I like getting out of town. It's, it's well, they certainly place. did that. They traveled 300 miles to get here. It's a little bit out of town. Marker, short. Parker Dupree on the putback. It's a three-point lead, and Jim Ray is thinking, hmm, wait a minute. Team high seven points for Parker Dupree. Carpenter. Flips over to Bassett, looks inside to Hartel, thinks better of it. Mullen around to Carpenter for another three. That one counts. We're tied at 18. That's an important answer for Cape Elizabeth. Tanner Carpenter knocking down the big three ball. He's in the book. Bouchard comes around to Sawyer Dupree. Sawyer back to Bouchard. Marker on the cut. Doesn't go. Oh, right to you, Dave. The quick hands on the sideline here. Morse back on the floor, Bassett goes to the sideline for the Capers. Morse was bothering the inbounds play only a little bit. Sawyer still with Hartel out beyond the, that red line on the floor is the professional three-point line. Yeah, there's three three-point lines out here, Dave. It's gonna be confusing, not only for players, but for officials that aren't used to officiating oh, on this court. Finland. Split the defense and he was thinking, oh, I gotta lay up. Ball was just knocked off his dribble. Watch this. There he is with that double team we've been oh. talking about. Thought he had it. Said, oh, I forgot something. Mullen knocks the ball out of bounds on the inbounds pass. Nicosito in for Cape. And Carpenter goes to the sideline. He makes the three-point shot and the coach pulls him. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> coach, I'm feeling it. Uh, have a seat. I'm, I've warmed up. Let me, let me back in. 
See, first time Caribou's brought a sub, and here he is firing. Michael Brigman knocks it down. Just a freshman coming in. He's not scared of the big moment, big stage. Gives the Vikings a three-point lead. First touch of the ball, he lets it fly. That's OK. Sometimes the freshmen don't know better, right? These, these millennials, what can, <laughs> what can you do? They don't know how big of a moment this is. They're just playing ball. Lucido, they're coming around a Mullen. Mullen in the corner to Lucido. No, it's short. Agus, they get it back to Mullen. Rims it out, no good. And now Parker Dupree runs it down. Knock the ball away from Hartel. Cape's best offense in this half has been off of offensive rebounds. When Caribou can get the D rebound, they're okay. Sawyer Dupree for three, no. Mullen with the rebound, looked ahead to Morris, decided against it. Now takes it all of the way to the basket, up and in. Yeah, Nate Mullen, a little hesitation drive there. Must little change of tempo. In mind. Kyle Corrigan said, hey, you have to stop the penetrator. You can't let him go coast to coast. Yeah, got to stop ball in the fast break. They thought they had him stopped, <laughs> then he turned on the gas. Yeah. You can see him, he was talking before they ever got to the huddle. That's right. <laughs> guys, guys, <laughs> give me your attention. That's not the way it's supposed to look. First year coach, Kyle Corrigan, just 28 years old when he got hired for this job. He's taken his Caribou Vikings all the way to the state final. Yeah, you may get a lifetime contract at this rate. Yeah, he'll never have to pay for a meal again in the town of Caribou. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jim Ray can tell you, you know, you, you may be 28 now, but you're going to feel older by the time you're done. <laughs> exactly. 21-20, one-point game. Caribou with the ball in the lead. 2.06 to go, second quarter. Entertaining contest here between two Class B teams. Sawyer goes inside to Parker. Parker is called for traveling. Andrew Hartel helps him up. And <laughs> Parker's thinking, didn't I get hit by somebody? I'm pretty sure I got contact here <laughs> as Parker's double teamed, tries to clear a little space. And they call him for up and down, hey. traveling. From here, that looked like a good call. Love the replay. Mullen clears out. Finland, good defense, but Mullen steps back and. Makes a little baseline shot. Yeah, tough baseline, Jay, from the short corner by Nate Mullen. He's got a quick four points. Got a reach in foul on Morse. Neither of these teams necessarily in foul trouble here. That was only the four, uh, 15 foul for Cape Elizabeth. Carpenter in, Aceto out for the Capers. Brigman gets Bouchard. Back to Brigman, no. Hartel with the rebound. See off those sideline inbounds plays, the inbounder cutting to the basket often creates an opportunity. Brigman had a chance, couldn't finish. Morse tries to drive Bouchard off the play. Nice defense by Bouchard. Yeah, great job by Bouchard, forcing him into the tough angle under the basket. Parker Dupre. A lot of bodies falling. Fisher's letting them play here a little bit. Impressed with the hustle by Andrew Hartel. Third time today he's got on the floor. Vegas. Back to Mullen. Carpenter. Carpenter wants to come to Hartel. Instead he comes to Mullen. 30 seconds to go. Hartel gets the ball in the lane. Puts it up. Blocked from behind by Parker Dupre. It'll remain. Cape Elizabeth basketball. And once again, two or three Caribou defenders doubling down on Hartel every Jim time Ray he catches. Jim Ray has called his play. He's got to fight through a lot of arms down there. They have a set play here, 26.6 seconds to go in the half. And Jim Ray, do they want to hold for one? Yes, they bring the ball back out. They have the one point lead. They had a two-point lead to end the first quarter. Hartel being guarded here, hands the ball off to Mullen. Under 10, under eight. Clock ticking, Morse looking inside to Hartel, comes instead to Haggis. Carpenter from the corner, no. Tapped by Hartel to no avail. 
We've reached halftime in the boys' class B state championship game. The Capers of Cape Elizabeth, 22. The Vikings of Caribou, 21. You're watching state championship basketball on Maine Public Television. The 40th anniversary of high school basketball on Maine Public Television is made possible by CN Brown Company with 76 Big Apple stores throughout Maine and New Hampshire proudly supports high school basketball online at cnbrown.com. Seeking a career change to get ahead or considering your next steps after high school? UMA is a great place to start with statewide access and affordable tuition. Hammond Lumber Company, a Maine family business serving contractors and do-it-yourselfers from 21 stores in southern, central, northern, and down east Maine. We're at halftime in the Cross Insurance Arena in Portland, Maine, and you are watching state championship Class B basketball. Oh, we have a couple of people in Caribou Maroon. Brian, when you get done with the woman, have her come by and say hello, will you? <laughs> Standing by with Brian Seidlinger are two people very famous from the Caribou area. One is the guy who heard the shot around the county, Mike Thurston, 50 years ago, and the other is United States Senator Susan Collins. That's right, Dave. You stole my thunder a little bit. I was going to say I'm standing here with the most famous person from Caribou and also Susan Collins. <laughs> Mike Thurston, Senator, thank you guys very much for joining me. I, it's almost cliche at this point, right? 50 years ago, you hit the shot in the old Bangor Auditorium. They gave you the three-point win over Westbrook. I guess you probably get asked about it now and again, come tournament time. I've been asked about it once or twice in the last 50 years. Yeah, I certainly have, yeah. And Senator, you were at the game. You were in the stand. I was. I was a sophomore at Caribou High School, and I was in the stands, and I remember when Mike made that incredible shot from half court and won the game. It was so exciting. We flooded onto the floor. He was a hero forevermore. Still is. Like I said, he's still the most famous person from Caribou. No disrespect. You, got, you came from New Hampshire to be here. Obviously, you're very busy. Um, can you talk about a little bit about what it means like to the, the community of Caribou that you guys would come all this way? They're so far, this is the best game of the tournament so far. I think it means everything. High school basketball in Maine is it. Uh, as cold as last week was in Maine, it was the best week of the year. High school basketball will forever have a place in everybody's heart in Maine. That is absolutely true. And if you look at the number of people who are here today, I don't think there's anyone left in Aroostook County. You know what, I mean, Cape Elizabeth isn't that far from here. Caribou is about 300 miles, and this really does, I don't know if you can tell at home, this sounds like a home game for Caribou. It really is incredible. Um, does, does this, you got a great band, you got a great great fans here, do you ever, does this take you back? I mean, do you, do you want to be back in high school again and, and doing this all over again? Whoa, that I'm not too sure about. Uh, what, I, what I will tell you is I said to somebody earlier, I looked up at the stands that this is reminiscent of 1969 when they were up to the very, very top at the old Bang Auditorium, some 6,000 plus people and you could barely see up top. This is just exactly the same, maybe not quite as many people, but what a great feeling. Does it feel a bit like, like homecoming week? It does indeed. I've seen so many friends that I haven't seen in years from all over the state. It's not only people from Caribou, there's the Caribou diaspora out there and they're all here. And everybody's reliving uh, 50 years ago who was old enough, but those who weren't around still know the story of Mike Thurston. How, how well do you guys keep up with Caribou basketball and Caribou sports in general? I'm, I, you live in New Hampshire, obviously you're busy, but how, how, how well do you keep up with what goes on up in Caribou at the high school? I, I keep up with it a lot. Uh, before we moved down to New Hampshire uh, four years ago, I did some coaching at Old Town High School, so we played Caribou. Uh, you know, I'm just going to tell you this, when you've worn the maroon and white, maybe some gold now, I have no idea, but when you've worn the maroon and white, it's in your blood forever. It really is. That's absolutely true. I went to the game last weekend when Caribou pulled out the win over an outstanding Herman team. What a game. They played with such heart, and that's what I remember about that historic 1969 
team, but with Mike, Mike Kelly, Pete Curran, Quentin Blackstone, Keith Rockwell, they played with such heart. Real quick, uh, we got a few more minutes. What do you think about the second half? You got any predictions? What do you think? I love the way Caribou came back in the first half. They're extremely well coached, very well drilled. They shoot the ball well. If they can keep rebounding and hit a few perimeter shots, I like their chances. I do too. And how could I ever think otherwise? <laughs> All right, well, it's really exciting to be here. Listen, thank you guys very much thank for you. joining me. Dave, we're going to throw it back to you. That's it from the floor. Hanging out with a hoi polloi is Brian Seidlinger. You know, it was before your time, Brandon, but Thurston actually had two half court shots. He had one in the, I think it was the regional final, then he had the other in the state game, and they had, couldn't do it again. He did it twice. Well, yeah, um, I, was, I was negative 15 when the shot heard around the state <laughs> happened, yeah, yeah. so I'll take your word for it, but I've certainly no. heard that story a lot growing up in the Bangor area and going to the old Bangor Auditorium, one of the greatest moments that building ever had. Well, Mike went on to be one of the better high school officials, too. So he, he was coaching, he uh, did officiating, obviously, uh, any watering hole he's ever attended, anybody from the county can say, Mikey, I remember you. There you see it, we're at the half. 22-21, Cape leading Caribou. Don't go away, we'll have the third quarter play for you when we return to the Cross Insurance Arena, station for the main public television. The 40th anniversary of high school basketball on Maine Public Television is made possible by Hammond Lumber Company, a Maine family business serving contractors and do-it-yourselfers with building supplies and custom services since 1953. CN Brown Energy, in business for 70 years. Heating oil and electricity offerings at cnbrownenergy.com. UMA is statewide. With two campuses, eight UMA centers, and 32 course sites, they can help you start or finish your degree and advance your career. I'm fine. Stevie, nice to see you. Thank you. <laughs> we may be on. I've got to say hello to Senator Collins. You don't mind, do you? And her chief of staff, Steve Abbott, as uh, they're walking along. they got to say their hellos, you know. Brandon Terrell is a major figure in Maine <laughs> politics and society. A pretty average Saturday here, Dave, and uh, state championship, statewide broadcast. Get to shake hands with a sitting United States senator. Hey, Just an average day. Saturday here in Portland. That was a nice interview with Brian Seidlinger. Both teams back on the floor. As we're going to be ready for the third quarter of play. But that is such a great indication. I don't think Thurston was too far off in that you know what? People remember everything. Okay, we have in Bangor, we have a result out of the girls' class D game, Southern Rustic defeating Greenville, 55-30. Southern Rustic had a great year. Yeah, they certainly state, did. State championship will certainly prove that. Greenville. Here we have 16 minutes of basketball left, Brandon, and uh, Senator Collins and Mike Thurston may know who's going to win, but I don't know as we do yet. Yeah, the town of Caribou behind us, Mike Thurston, Senator Collins, they all believe in this Caribou team. But I'd like to remind you, Cape Elizabeth is ahead right now. Yes, and they is. still have Andrew Hartel doing great work on the inside. Caribou, their discussion at halftime, I imagine a good portion of their talk and, was and, defensive rebound. And, and not a lot of foul trouble on either team. The That's officials true. have allowed the kids, there's, there's been a lot of contact, but for the most part, the boys have been allowed to play a little bit. We will open the third quarter with the Vikings trailing by one, but with the ball. Parker Dupree to inbound it to Bouchard. Alex Bouchard, the 5'10 junior, gets it over to Sawyer Dupree. Finland puts it up and crawls it up over the rim, and Caribou regains the lead. A quick two. Defensive pressure by Caribou. Quick two for Austin Finland. He's got four points. Carpenter, Dupree, striding right along with them. They set the offense up. Finland jumps out on Mullen. They go inside to Hartel. Hartel up and can't get it to go. Marker, nice play by Marker to 
knocked the ball away from Finland, or from uh, Hartel rather. But yeah, Hartel is now you get, a get game four high. chances. Chances chances are one of them will go in. Well, if they talked at halftime about defensive rebound, that talk didn't work. Their first possession. Marker lets fly with a three. Loose ball comes to Bouchard. Bouchard takes the ball to the baseline. No, Hartel cleans off the defensive backboard. Okay, quick hands by Parker to pray to keep that one alive. Bouchard couldn't get it to go. Morris. Bring it out high to Carpenter. Carpenter pushes off the play and gonna have a push in the defensive action and they and Hartel wants to know, was that me? And we'll find out shortly. It's 3-2, yes, it's Andrew Hartel. Great job by Sawyer Dupre, boxing out Hartel, picking up the pushing foul. Bouchard in the corner, Sawyer Dupre drives on Andrew Hartel, comes out to Austin Finland for three. Yes, Austin Finland for three. And Dan Meadow comes over, we're gonna check to see if it was a three or whether the foot was on. It's gonna be a three. Yeah, we mentioned that earlier, Dave. It's going to be tough for these officials who aren't used to this floor. There's three lines out there. You're just going to be behind the black one. You see Austin Finland stepping in with confidence. Yeah, Kyle Corrigan, coach for the Vikings, and Dan Neto sharing a laugh over there. Yeah, see all these lines on the floor? What do you think this is? You think Finland's ready for the last 16 minutes of his high school career? Came out of the locker room. He's got five points in this third quarter. Conley, you get around to Mullen. Mullen for three. Side rims it, no good, ball kept alive and picked up by Vikings. Alex Bouchard, pass attempt. Knocked aside by Mullen. Carpenter comes to Quinn Morris. Morris, baseline, puts it up. And Austin Finland said, you may think you're gonna shoot that ball, but I think I'm gonna put it over in the... Or to knock it over into the spectator, penalty box. Yeah. Wow, Austin Finland coming up aggressively. Getting that one. Mullen, Carpenter, for three. Yeah, that's so important for the guards of Cape Elizabeth to make some outside shots. It can't all come from Hartel, and if the guards can make shots, it's gonna loosen up the pressure inside on Andrew. Sorry, Dupree, to Finland, Finland, to Bouchard. Parker Dupree for three, rattles out. Hartel with the rebound. Has some room down court with Carpenter, and up and in. Carpenter leaks out for that long outlet pass from Hartel. Carpenter's got five in the quarter, eight for the game. Three-point lead, and Marker's called for the travel. But that was good downcourt vision by Andrew Hartel. Has the ball in the lane, and he could see a streak of white. We've talked about how hard Hartel has to work offensively. He hasn't come off the court yet in the entire game. I think he still has his legs late in the fourth quarter. Finland gets called for a second foul. Nate Mullen didn't really like it. And a little yak going on between them. Just one team foul apiece. Almost midway yeah. through the third quarter. Finland <laughs> comes down to the official. Nick Raymond says, would you watch the push off? You might have heard him over our mics. Because he thought Mullen pushed him. Turnovers, they throw the ball out of bounds. 5.07 to go third quarter, 29-26. Cape Elizabeth leading Caribou, but Caribou with the ball. Bouchard, front court. Sawyer Dupree looks to park Dupree, decides, never mind. Comes in the corner to Finland. Finland tries to turn the corner, no good. Bouchard, pull up jumper, no good. Hartel with a rebound, hands it off to Mullen. So much pressure on the shooting percentage for Caribou because they're one and done just about every time down. Carpenter on the run, leaves it short. Hartel over the back is gonna get called for a second foul. Yeah, second yeah. foul in this third quarter what, on Hartel. What they want is, Andrew, you need to go up, not across. If you go across, you're going to be colliding with bodies. If you go up, the bodies are going to be colliding with you. And that's what he was doing in the first half, but maybe his legs are getting just a little bit fatigued here in the third quarter. Sawyer comes to Finland, and Finland is being hand-checked. Yeah. 
going to be on Conley, going to be on Conley. Bouchard to Finland open for just a second if he shot immediately Finland now takes the shot one of the few times that Hartel has not been around for the rebound yeah, Sawyer Dupre trying to pull Hartel away from the basket Hartel up and in Bouchard went over to help but once Hartel had both hands on the ball there was nothing he could do nice job keeping the ball up high by Hartel he now has a game high 12 points Bouchard in the corner to Finland, how high to Sawyer to pray. Back to Bouchard up and in. Three point game. First field goal of the game for Alex Bouchard. He does have two foul shots for four points. Quinn Morse. Mullen to Conley. Back to Carpenter for three. No. Finland with the loose ball. Cross court to Bouchard. Bouchard in front court. Finland called for it. Wasn't going to get it. Isaac Marker. Sorry, Dupree. Parker Dupree. Parker, let's fly with the three. No, and over the back is Isaac Marker. One shot and done again for Caribou. But every time down here in the third quarter, Cape Elizabeth doing a nice job defensive rebounding. They pulled Hartel away from the basket sometimes. Try to get him out of the defensive rebounding action, but the other four players for Cape also doing a nice job boxing out, securing rebounds. Man Haggis and Jack Bassett coming in for Cape. Uh, Conley and Tanner Carpenter go to the sideline. Cape with the ball in the lead. Coming down to the three minute mark, third quarter. Class B Boys State Championship. Bassett, Finland, knocks the ball loose, retrieved by Mullen. It's almost a five second call. Bassett had no place to go with it. Ball tapped loose, Marker with it. Marker drives on Haggis, has a little room up and in. Isaac Marker, what a play. Marker showing off his speed with the dribble, blowing past the defender for two. Mullen takes the three, gets the ball to Hartel. Hartel up by the free throw line, not sure he wants to be there. Haggis comes to Mullen for three. Side rim, ball knocked aside by Parker Dupree. Andrew Hartel up and in. And he wanted a foul call, he wanted the end one, didn't get it. Nice strong move along the baseline for Hartel. Nice footwork to not travel and finish that too. Sorry, Dupree drives on Hartel, puts it up and in. Hartel did not want the third foul in the quarter. These kids get pretty smart playing this game, you know what? Yes, he, he <laughs> certainly has. A nice drive there by Sawyer. And, but Sawyer's looking at it going, Hartel already has picked up two fouls this quarter. I can drive on him, I can drive on him. And he did. Yeah, I gotta take him to the basket, which is a smart play. Morris wants to go into Hartel, instead comes to Mullen. Under a minute and a half to play. Third quarter. Come on, brings it around. They come into Hartel, Hartel wants to find some room across cross the, the, the lane, and Marker is gonna get called by Dan Neto for the over the back reach in foul. Marker says he got all ball. Cape Elizabeth is really well schooled. I'm sure all year long teams have double and triple teamed Hartel. They really do a nice job of getting to the weak block so that Hartel can find them with that nice little bounce pass. Morris misses the free throw. Conley in and Hartel out. Jim Ray looking at it saying, at a minute 12, let the big guy take a rest and avoid that foul because if that's what they're going to do is charge at him on offense, Morse makes the second. Two-point game. Alex Bouchard. Parker Dupre trailing him into the front court. Mullen watching Bouchard. They swing it around. Brigman to Finland. Finland. And they're going to say it's a player control foul on Austin Finland. Tough yeah. call. Conley gets great position. He sets up. 
Finland initiates that contact. It's going to be an offensive foul. Jim Ray calls the play. Mullen relays it. Parker Dupre messes it up. Parker up and in. We have a tie game. Parker's first points of the second half. He's got nine for the game. Yeah, I, I think these kids benefited some scouting. They knew what the play was going to be, and Parker Dupre got a hand in it, intercepted, went down and scored. Tape a little bit out of sorts without Hartel on the floor. Well, 20 seconds to go. They may maybe looking just to control the play for the balance of the quarter. Brigman checks the clock, moves out on Mullen. Now 10 as they trigger the end of the quarter play. Mullen, Haggis, Mullen. Long toss, intercepted by Sawyer to three. That's not how Jim Ray threw it up. <laughs> Let's put it that way. We've reached the end of three quarters of play in the boys' Class B state championship game. Not a lot to choose, two really good teams. Cape and Caribou tied at 34. You're watching tournament basketball on the stations of Maine Public Television. The 40th anniversary of high school basketball on Maine Public Television is made possible by Memic, helping keep Mainers safe at work since 1993. Applications now open for the Horizon Scholarship for families of injured workers. Memic.com. What a moment when you find your way to a new home at your local Maine credit union. Contact your local Maine credit union. It's your moment. Own it. You're looking in as we're about to start the fourth quarter of a tie game, 34-34 in the State Boys Class B championship game. For 40 years, your support has made Maine Public Television's coverage of high school basketball tournament possible. We've helped showcase some of Maine's best student athletes, kept this tradition alive and healthy, and keep doing that. Think about becoming a member. MainPublic.org slash basketball and click the big red donate button. Haggis, no call. And we are going to get a call and it's going to be on Hartel in the rebounding action. That's the third time Hartel has had a foul called on him in rebounding action. As Haggis can't get that to go. And there's the foul right there over Sawyer Dupre. And Hartel has three. Brigman, Soria Dupree, Parker Dupree, Bouchard, and Finland on the floor for Caribou. Hartel, Morse, Carpenter, Mullen, and Haggis on the floor for Cape. Finland to Soria Dupree. Every possession becomes so critical now. Game tied. Goal ball on the line. Alex Bouchard in the corner to Finland, gets it back. Sawyer Dupree drives, wants to, on Hartel, thinks better of it. Finland, hand off to Bouchard. Finds a little room, puts it up and in. Caribou has the lead. Athletic drive by Alex Bouchard to avoid the charge and still finish with the right hand. Great touch. Mullen pulls it out. Cape sets up. Comes to Haggis, in the corner to Carpenter for three. Left it short. Alex Bouchard picks the rebound from the floor. Sawyer Dupree in the corner to Finland. Finland back to Sawyer, around top to Bouchard. Bouchard, Brigman, Brigman behind the back. Now looking for Parker Dupree and finds it. Sawyer, almost daring to go on Hartel. Bouchard, pull up jumper. Short, Hartel with a rebound, keeps it in. A good hustle there by Hartel to collect that in, almost scored it out of bounds on him. Mullen behind the back, swallowed up, nothing. Brigman with a rebound. Bouchard, Sawyer Dupree, Sawyer Dupree to Parker Dupree. Brigman back to Parker, puts up the runner, 
And Andrew Hartel says, not this time. Well, great plays on both sides there. Great ball movement from Caribou with the give and go action back to Parker Dupre. But Andrew Hartel says, get that out of here. Jim Ray wants a timeout. Capers of Cape Elizabeth trailing by two with 5.49 to go in the fourth. 36-34. Just as Kyle Corrigan drew it up, don't you think? First year coach going up against a veteran like Jim Ray and they're playing mind games and coaching games out here. So they're giving up so much size to Hartel on the inside. They've had to make up for it with some heart and some grit and they've done so here to battle to a two point lead just under six minutes left. Caribou hasn't been to a state final since 1983. They haven't won one since 1969. They're less than six minutes away from doing it. Bregman will put the ball inbounds for Caribou on the baseline. Comes to Finland. Hands it off to Bouchard. Bouchard. Quinn Morse on him. See Set how far out Sawyer's standing to pull Hartel away. Drives on Hartel, kicks it to Finland. Finland, quick recovery, caper defense. Finland. Can be patient with the lead. Parker Dupre puts the ball off Quinn Morse's knee. Quinn Morse. And Parker Dupre. Yeah, Quinn Morse. They made Mullen are really quick. And Parker Dupree beats the ball down the floor. Yeah, he had a turnover on one end, and he was mad at himself. He took off to beat them back, but the frustration foul on the other end will send Mullen to the line. All of that, and he missed the free throw. The score and clock are on the minds of these kids even now. Plenty of time left, 5.18 in the fourth. Mullen makes the second, we got a one point game. Alex Bouchard. They bring it around to Parker Dupree. Dupree been fairly quiet here. Oh, nice to Finland, puts it up. And too strong. Taps it out. Good play. A great vision by Bouchard to find him with that pass. Smart play by Finland to tap it back out. Another chance at it. Sorry, Dupree to Parker Dupree. Andrew Hartel is kind of hanging around. And we got a hand check foul. Let's see who that's on. That's on 32. That's with, all, with, all the, with all the physical work that's been going on here, that was a gentle <laughs> hand check. And that's four on Hartel. And, so and he's sorry, be really Sorry careful. Dupree's got to be thinking about it. Hartel does not want to come out and get too near Sawyer Dupree. Four and a half minutes to go. One point game. Sawyer gets it to Finland. Finland to Brigman. Brigman for three. It's going to be short. Haggis down to the rebound. Mullen. Freshman let fire with a hand in his face. Couldn't get it. Carpenter. To get the ball to Hartel. He's got to watch it here. No. Finland with the rebound for Caribou. Cartel. Cartel can't go as aggressively as he wants. Yeah, it looks like he caught a defender with an elbow there, but it's just because he's so tall. Finland, no. Loose ball, tapped by Finland. And he looks over to Corrigan, he wants a foul. Corrigan says, I'm not calling this game. Great defense. Great hustle. This ball is going to be tied up. It'll be a possession arrow. Terrible. How much do these kids want this game, Dave? Both diving on the floor, trying to rip the ball away from each other. Great hustle by Austin Finland. Brigman checks out, gives a pat on the back to his replacement, Isaac Marker. Starter is now on the floor for Caribou. Finland. Sawyer Dupree, Parker Dupree. They have the one point lead. 
Parker Dupree. Finland for three, yes! He delivered that pass right in the shot pocket so Finland could step into that one with confidence and knocks it down. Four point lead, largest lead of the game for the Caribou Vikings as we approach the three minute mark. Conley comes out, gets the pass, comes to Quinn Morse, Morse. Had a three-pointer to start the game. He's been fairly quiet since. Carpenter wants to drive on Parker Dupree. Player control foul on Carpenter. That's two huge plays in a row by Parker Dupree. A great pass for a three-pointer on one end. On the other end, he takes the charge, earns the turnover. And Hartel's on the bench for Cape Elizabeth. We'll see how long Coach Ray elects Not to keep him there. Not much longer. Finland. Loses control, gets swallowed up, and we get a foul. Bonus. Amon Haggis. Finland's been an adventure out here. Lost control of the basketball. There was physical contact, some of which was initiated by him. Officials let, let it go on both sides. But as he recovered the ball, he got hit. Misses the first of the one-on-one, -on -one, but Sawyer Dupree right there for the rebound. Yeah, with Hartel out of the game. That shouldn't have happened. Caribou was able to get that rebound. Parker Dupree reverses course. Finds Marker. Marker off to Bouchard. Under two and a half. And player control foul. Parker Dupree as calmly goes down. Dan Meadow says, yeah, you know, works at both ends of the floor, guys. That's the second time this game, Matt Conley has got in a good defensive position and taken an offensive foul. Conley goes out and Andrew Hartel in, and I think he's called for the motion offense. They trail by four, under 220 seconds to go now. Cape has yet to make a field goal here in the fourth quarter, just one foul shot in the entire fourth. Morse looks inside to Hartel. Hartel grabs the loose ball, gets double teamed, goes off his, and out of bounds off Hartel. 2.08 to go in the fourth. See Hartel gets stuck in the corner, double teamed, tries to dribble out of it, just dribbles it right off his sneaker. I hate when that happens. Bouchard to Isaac Marker, back to Bouchard. Kind of crowded on this right side. Parker Dupree to Bouchard. Finland in the corner, has some room. Gets it back to Parker Dupree. No hurry here. Bouchard fakes like he's going to penetrate. Comes back out to Parker, now Sawyer. Sawyer, Alex Bouchard. They want a sure thing here. Austin. Bouchard off to Sawyer. Sawyer, Marker in the corner to Bouchard for three. No, crawls over the rim. And you're going to get Finland and Quinn Morse tied up. And I believe Finland's going to go to the free throw line as he tried to beat Morse to the loose ball. 126 to go in the fourth. Four point game. Those players arrived at the ball at about the same time, got tangled up. You see them going to the corner here. Uh, watch this. Oh, they see the little, little arm around Finland, oh, no. and then yep. Morse landed on him. <laughs> Finland will go to the foul line. Austin Finland's going to earn his milk and cookies after this one. So he's he has the lone, worked hard in this second half. He's the lone senior captain on this team. Parker Dupre is also a captain, but he's just a junior. So Austin Finland knows this is his last high school basketball game ever, and he's leaving it all out here on the court. Well, Bouchard is a junior. Parker Dupre is a junior. Isaac Mark is a junior. Sorry, Dupre is a sophomore. Yeah, you're going to hear from a freshman. this Caribou team again. <laughs> Chances are Caribou will be in the Eastern or the Northern Maine tournament next year. And then some. Cape still doesn't have a field goal here in this fourth quarter. Caribou has held them to just one point. Austin Finland at the free throw line, shooting the one and one. Andrew Hartel will never forgive himself if he doesn't make the rebound off a miss. Oh. Finland makes it a five point game. 126 to go, fourth quarter. It's 
it's a six point game. Mullen. Finland stays right with him. Andrew Hartel. Sawyer Dupree. Andrew Hartel flips it up and in. Nice play. Great footwork by Hartel along the baseline. Get through the double team, not travel. Get the reverse layup. Isaac Marker. They're risky. They're going to they're going to consult. Time out. The timeout call preceded <laughs> the foul call. Everybody was waiting. They was were, it a charger or a block? It was it a charger block? And Martell is big. I had four. I had four. Yeah. Minutes. Stop it. It's dead. 103 it's to go. Timeout. Quick timeout by Kyle Corrigan. Just as a change of pace. Have you been following the action on High School Quiz Show Maine? Hey, maybe your school wants to try out. Season four is coming up. Head to mainpublic.org slash high school quiz show main. Find out how to be part of next year's series. Represent your community. Maybe take home the $1,000 prize for your school's project graduation. High school quiz show main, Thursdays at 8 on Main Public Television. 103 to go, fourth quarter. 41 37. Caribou leading Cape. Class B Boys State Championship. See, one of the crowds over in the Caribou student section says, Small town, big dreams. I like that sign. That could be the motto of this Caribou team from a small town in Arusta County. Big dreams of a gold ball, first time in 50 years. Bouchard off to Parker Dupree. Hartel chasing him around. Parker Dupree picks up the dribble, gets the ball off to Finland. Mullen on the reach in with 51.6 seconds to go, and Finland goes back to the free throw line. Still just one and one, one more time. Caribou Vikings this second half have been playing like a team possessed. Especially Finland. He now has 13 points for the game. 11 of those have all been in the second half. And the lead is five, so. Short, I guess on the rebound. Mullen takes a look, he's directing traffic. They need points in a hurry. Can't dawdle on the dribble. We come to Hartel. Hartel holding high. Morris had the three. Bouchard came right out on him. They come inside to Hartel. Hartel steps inside. And we're going to go to the free throw line. And Sawyer to pray. Sawyer to pray. Really took that one. He got the worst of that. I see Sawyer trying to pick up the charge. Watch 30. To foul out. Ball, oh. The elbow to the nose. Elbow to the oh. face. And Hartel will go to the line for two. Dan Neto just checking. Sorry, are you okay? You okay? And he hangs on to the ball. That's good officiating right there. You don't want to send the kid out of the game because he's, Absolutely. he's hurt. Yeah, got to check on him. Andrew Hartel makes it a four-point game with 33.3. He can make it a three-point game and look for the defensive pressure of the Capers. Hartel has play here. game high 17 points. Going for 18 here. Carpenter bothering the inbounds pass. They get it to Bouchard. Bouchard gets double teamed. He swallowed up and sends it off the shin of Nate Mullen. See Kate bringing some suffocating full court man Four to man. seconds off the clock. Caribou gets the reset. Marker. Will they send a flyer? No, they get to Parker Dupree. Dupree. Right into the hands of Hartel. Mullen, Agus, plenty of time. Hartel in the corner for three. Carpenter, yes. We're all tied up, Dave. Finland, 10 seconds. Bouchard, Corrigan takes the timeout. For Taylor Carpenter, how about the guts to step into that corner three? and knock it down. Well, you you counted the number of field goals that Cape has had in the second half. Carpenter to take the three, knowing that they need to make the three. Yeah, that was just their second made field goal in this fourth quarter as Hartel had one, and Carpenter just knocked down the biggest one of the fourth quarter to tie this up. Now Coach Corrigan is drawing up his best play. How about the pressure on Coach Corrigan right now? First year coach, 
team in the state final, looking for a first gold ball in 50 years. He's got 7.7 .7 seconds to get a man open for a shot. Hey, here. you know, they, they, they've let the boys play. You get 7.7 .7 seconds. They're going to put a, t a play out there designed to create a foul. Well, you want to draw Harto away from the basket, like Sawyer Dupre has been doing, and then have either Bouchard or Finland yeah. or Parker Dupre attack the basket. What we're hearing is cheering on all sides of this arena today. What's At that, Dave? Th that's, <laughs> no, it's, it speaks to the quality of the game that we've had here and the level of competition for these two teams. Everybody's on their feet. Bouchard, the steal, Haggis, stolen back by Parker Dupre. He's got to let it fly. He does. Oh! No, we're going overtime. Mike Thurston just had some flashbacks, didn't he, Dave? He's in the building. He's here. <laughs> wow, Parker Dupre could have joined Mr. Thurston in the history books of Caribou High School, and darn near did. That looked good. They, I think they would have had to check it, though, if he'd released it in time. From our angle, it looked like that was going to be nothing but net. You see here on the replay, Parker Dupre took a peek up at the clock, see how much time he had, stepped into it, held that follow through, Whoa, just catches back just iron. You are watching State Class B Boys Championship Basketball from the Cross Insurance Arena in Portland. We have extra time coming up, four minutes of overtime. I haven't had enough of this game yet anyway. Let's play four more minutes. Hartel still has foul trouble. And not bad, really, beyond that. It was a great job by Cape Elizabeth to hang around while Hartel had to sit on the bench for a couple minutes and knock down a couple big shots. And here they are in overtime. I believe we'll have a jump. Possession arrow has been turned off. Hartel has a game high 18. Finland has 13 for the Vikings. Fans standing on both sides here, Cape and Caribou. They will be going in the same directions as they were in the second half. So they'll be going in the direction of their team bench. Hartel easily wins the tap. Parker Dupree was going to give it to him anyway. Parker Cape with the ball. You can have that one, big guy. We're tried, tied at 42. Hartel well away from the basket. Sawyer Dupree conscious of how close he can get his nose to Andrew Hartel's elbow. Morse back to Mullen. Haggis and Jim Ray wants a timeout. Well, you killed 26 seconds of time, and Jim Ray is yakking away at his guards. Yeah, Coach Ray must have wanted a particular offensive set that time and didn't like the laxical date, lackadaisical nature of his guard play as he's speaking emphatically in his huddle. Coach Corrigan pumping up his crew to play some defense. Now, each team gets an extra timeout here in overtime, so we still have two apiece remaining. But the fouls carry over, the individuals and the team fouls. So any team foul against Cape is going to put a Caribou Viking on the line for two free throws. It's still going to be the one-on-one -on -one for another couple of fouls should any be committed by the Vikings. But here we have it. Cape with the ball. Score tied at 42. Tanner Carpenter inbound. Nate Mullen runs to the open floor. Hartel. Mullen directing traffic, sending Quinn Morris. Morris trying to set screens as they want to free somebody up along the baseline. So far, Caribou has not allowed it. Morris back to Mullen. Carpenter, a little deep for a three from there. Hartel. Patient set. Morris has some room. That was going nowhere. A great save, save by Hartel. Hartel. 
Declan Morris lost the handle on that on his way to the rack. Cartel bailed him out. <laughs> Quinn, what kind of a shot was that? Uh, <laughs> not my best. Cartel wants to go over Soria Dupree. Stolen away. Finland. Finland drives on Mullen. Parker Dupree up and in. The foul is going to be called on Amon Haggis. Well, Parker Dupre couldn't make the three-pointer to win the game at the end of regulation, but he gets the first basket of overtime, and he's going to have a chance to add one more. See, Cape Elizabeth ran over a minute off the clock to start the overtime. Dupre makes it. Couldn't cash in. Three-point lead, Caribou. Minute and a half gone in the overtime. Hartel, Quinn Morris, Morris. Mullen for three. Count it. You can see he stepped into that one with confidence. He got open off the ball screen and knocked it down. Soria Dupree. Arch Isaac Marker called for the ball. Tanner Carpenter was trailing him through the, free, uh, through the lane. Soria Dupree, off to Marker, Marker, hands it back to Sawyer. Soria Dupree, Marker, drops it off to Sawyer. A little two-man game going on here. See, Carpenter's trying to fix his sneaker. There's the top part of his sneakers flopping all around. He's trying to play half-court defense. Coming down to the 130 mark, Quinn Morse guarding Parker Dupree. Bouchard comes to Sawyer Dupree. He's looking at Hartel thinking, if you just give me the go-ahead coach, I'll take it at him. Just one more foul would do it. Isaac Marker has some room in the lane, closed off as Hartel came in to help out. Yeah, both teams being super patient, won Bouchard. nothing but excellent shots. Sawyer Dupree, Parker Dupree, one minute to go in the overtime, game tie. Parker Dupree to Finland, Finland drives, puts it up, and it's fouled. It's a nice cut to the basket by Finland. A great pass to find him, uses the up fake to draw the harm, and he gets to the line for two. Third foul on Haggis. Austin Finland can untie the game and doesn't. Finland's had a lot of looks at it here in the fourth quarter in overtime. He's three for six. Leaves that one well short. Yeah, it's three might, for seven. Be, might be a little bit of fatigue at, at work there. Score till tied. Hartel way out. Carpenter gets the ball to Quinn Morris. Finland is playing Energizer Bunny out here. Yeah, Cape wants Jumping last shot. Caribou might give it to him because they don't want to foul them. Marker guarding him. Picks up the dribble, and Jim Ray wants a timeout, and he is frustrated. He's. <laughs> He can break a molar doing that, the way he's gritting his teeth. <laughs> Very close to a couple of turnovers as Cape's trying to run the rest of these 22 seconds off and get the last shot to either win the game and go to a second overtime. Meanwhile, Caribou can't foul them in a tie game because that'll put them on the line for the opportunity to get some free points. 22.7 seconds to go. You see the score, you see the time. And you're seeing classic basketball game here on Maine Public Television. Two more tonight. The Class AA games are tonight down here. And uh, they're going to have a hard time living up to this one. I don't know. It's been an excellent game. They set the bar really high in the afternoon session. Caribou and Cape. Parker Dupre, Soria Dupre, Austin Finland, Alex Bouchard, and Isaac Marker. These five guys have been Iron Men. Not that Cape has played a whole lot more than that. Mullen, Morris, Haggis. Bouchard. Reach in foul. That's right, Bouchard's going to shoot two. 
We've seen that a couple of times now. In a big moment out of a timeout, a team trying to inbound the ball from the sideline. We saw it near the end of regulation. Caribou got the ball stolen from them. Their Cape got the ball stolen off their inbounds pass. Alex Bouchard, 5'10 junior, makes, puts Caribou up by one with 18 and a half to go. Bouchard's got seven in the game. Now I've got eight. Caribou retreats a little bit on defense. They have the two point lead. Mullen into the front court. 13 seconds, looking for Hartel. Hartel looking for Morris. Morris again open for the three. Morris puts it up and in. They're tied up again. Now, which one did we have timeout? Did Corrigan call the timeout or Jim Ray? I believe Coach Corrigan did. Yep. 2.8 seconds. There's enough time. There's also enough time to go to a second overtime. That's right. Well, we've seen a couple of these inbounds plays go wrong. So job number one is just to inbound the ball here without getting it stolen. That would be a disaster if Cape steals the ball and gets their own shot opportunity here. So job number one is just to make a clean inbounds pass and a catch. Then they can worry about getting a couple dribbles and maybe a, a long shot here. Another chance at the Mike Thurston coming up here, potentially. Um, now, they still have the right to run the baseline. That's so, right, after a big so shot. So you can take off, and I don't know if they've... Some of these coaches have put in plays like that. I don't know if Kyle has, but it... That's right, you can have somebody run out of bounds and actually pass it to them, and they can inbound it to somebody else if you want to. Let's see what he draws we'll up. We'll have bodies in motion. 2.8 seconds to go, overtime, 47-47. Cape and Caribou. Marker to inbound. He has Finland. He has Bouchard at the half court. He's got Parker to free. Finland. Finland. Ball's knocked out of, out of play with 0.3 seconds to go. It'll still be. Do you believe this? Can you get somebody to the to the basket? 0.3 Coach, seconds is Coach not Morgan enough. wants to know if he's got a timeout or not. He does. He has one left. Well, it's not enough time to get a shot away, so you'd have to be thinking maybe you can draw a foul. Right, Meanwhile, gonna, Jim Ray's gonna say, whatever you do, do not foul. Right, straight up without fouling is the message in the Cape huddle. For the Caribou huddle, you gotta get some kind of action over the top, going all the way to the basket with a long lob pass from the sideline here, somewhere in the vicinity of the like a, you know, Can you get a tip at that point? That right. would be, Yeah, you know, good way to spend a Saturday afternoon, isn't it? That's yeah, fantastic. Everybody on their feet. This place is wild. Hartel to bother the inbound. That's good coaching by Jim Ray. Isaac Marker, can't go, no, that's it. We go to a second overtime. Just so you know, the girls double A class A championship supposed to be at 6.05, we could still be playing Class B boys <laughs> by 6.05. That's right. The Class AA boys start at 9 p.m. Maybe we'll still be playing then. So both teams really elected to be exceptionally patient in that overtime. Every time they had the ball, they really valued that possession, and they ran clock and ran clock and ran clock. Nice gesture there. Both coaches met at the half court, shook hands. They know what they've seen, too. And they, yeah. they once again get one more timeout each added back on. So Coach Corrigan gets one timeout to work with here in the second overtime. Coach Ray has two. Just a whole hum outing. These guys will sleep on the bus all the way back to Caribou. Not if they win. It'll be loud and rowdy, 300 mile ride if they're carrying a gold ball with them in the bus. All right, we have the tap again. I don't know if Parker Dupre is gonna go up for it. Now, <laughs> Dan Neto says, come on. Yeah, you double clutch that one, Nick. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta get the ball in the air for you, will you? Uh, Nate Mullen. 
retrieves the ball in the backcourt for the Cape Elizabeth Capers. Game tied at 47, double overtime. Mullen, Haggis, Amon, drives on Marker, picks up the dribble, comes to Carpenter. Quinn Morris, back to Carpenter. May not see a lot of shots attempted here in the double overtime. Uh, both teams are going to run their offensive sets, run off clock, and maximize every possession. Sawyer Dupree still trying to front Hartel. Oh boy! And moving they're screen. Say Andrew Hartel grabbed at Sawyer Dupree. You hear the Caribou crowd behind us cheering for that. They know how big that is. Jim Ray just gave the stare to Dan Neto. Andrew Hartel has fouled out of the state championship game here in the second overtime on a team control foul, moving screen call. Dak Bassett comes in for Cape. Sawyer Dupree. Parker Dupree hands off to Bouchard. Bouchard kicks the ball back out. Sorry, Dupree. Caribou would be patient here as well. 2.55 to go in counting. Austin Finland. If it isn't there, they won't take it. Parker Dupree. Isaac Marker. Marker. Back to Parker Dupree. Carpenter watches him. They go baseline to Isaac Marker. Back to Alex Bouchard. Bouchard takes it in. And are they going to count it? Are they going to talk about it? No basket. Nope. You see dribble we'll see drive on Bouchard. Nope. We got the hand check. Split the double. Oh, he did wow. make that shot, but it was too late. Foul's on the floor, but he's still shooting foul shots because they're still in the double bonus. So it doesn't really matter whether he was shooting or not. He's going to get two. Can't get the chance for a three-point play. Somehow Parker Dupree wound up with some blood on him. They're furiously trying to find some band-aids in their med kit down the end of the bench. Bouchard misses the first. Clear in hand, the 6'2 senior is on the floor for Caribou. This is his first time on the floor. He's in double overtime. That's a big moment to come in for your first game action. One point lead, Caribou. Parker Dupree is bandaged up and ready to return. Bassett thinking, hmm, do I drive to the basket? No. Cape down one without the services of Andrew Hartel. Agus takes a look. Carpenter for three is short. Alex Bouchard ahead to Th Finland. Sawyer Dupree off to Finland. Puts it up around the rim, no good. Tanner Carpenter with a loose ball. And they're letting him play around the basket. Austin Finland couldn't get it down. Finland wanted the foul call, didn't hear a whistle. <laughs> Sorry, Finland. Norway. Bassett. Quinn Morris. Bassett calling for the ball. Mullen. It's right side. He lets it fly. That's going to be short. Sawyer Dupree right there. Just one point combined from these two teams here in double overtime. No field goals made. Sawyer Dupree up and in. And they're going to take it away. Well, they're going to take that away. They're going to award Tanner Carpenter with the charge. Carpenter set up in the middle of the lane. Yeah, Sawyer's momentum carries him right into Carpenter. That's player control, wave off the basket. Thought it might be a team control, in which case the basket would have counted. Instead, that's a player control foul. No hoop. So we still have a one-point game, and Jim Ray takes a timeout. You gotta be thinking here, 1.12 to go. And when your offense has been centered around your center, 
somebody here is going to have to be bold enough to take a shot and be close enough to make it. But that's the hard part. It's all season long they've had Andrew Hartel in the middle, get the ball into him, then you can work inside out when the defense collapses. Now it's on those perimeter guys to get inside the defense with some dribble penetration so they can work that same inside out game. And somebody's got to step in and knock down some shots. It was Tanner Carpenter who knocked down the huge three pointer with about 11 seconds left in regulation to tie it up that started these overtimes. We'll see if Carpenter can step up with another big shot. Get a good look at the Caribou Vikings. Jim Ray still speaking with his club. Carpenter, Mullen, Morris, Haggis, and Bassett on the floor for the Capers. Finland to bother the inbounds play. They want to go to Mullen. And they weren't ready for the full court press. And they wanted to. Haggis comes back to help. I'm going to make sure that they got it in in time. Not to worry on that. Quinn Morris drives the left side. Puts it up. No good. Rebound. Sawyer Dupree. Morris had a big field goal in the first overtime. Couldn't get that one. Reach in. Mullen. 50.3. Bouchard to the line. Finland comes over to talk to him. So Alex, I'm your captain. You must sink these shots. Alex <laughs> Bouchard. Bouchard, three for four in the two overtimes, five for six in the game. Like that five for seven. What tends to happen when fatigue sets in is you don't put enough arc on the free throw. And you don't make the free throw. Still just one point combined by these two teams here in the second overtime. Mullen. Finland stays right with him. Haggis, Sawyer Dupree watches. Bassett was calling for the ball. They didn't give it to him. Jack's going to get a complex at this rate. <laughs> Sorry, Jack. No. They try to go into Bassett. Marker steals it. Great defensive play by Marker. And reach in. Haggis. Couple huge stops in a row by Caribou as they dug in down here on the defensive end and got the late stops they needed here in the second overtime. But even if he makes these two, it's still going to be a one possession game. He's still 20 seconds left. Dan Neto flips the ball to Isaac Marker. He has two free throws. Again, three in a row missed by the Vikings. The mind does terrible things to him. Two point lead, Caribou. The clock is running. 19.8, Mullen. Finland stays with him. Mullen into the front court. 12 seconds, 10 seconds. Hagan, pass it. And a timeout, Jim Ray, 5.4 seconds. Coach Ray didn't see a good scoring opportunity developing in that half court set, so he takes a timeout to talk about it. Just five seconds left. Brandon, who's your who's your shooter? Well, I say probably either Carpenter or Mullen, as Carpenter has shown already in this game that he can step in and make a big shot. You see if they have something they like for a sideline inbounds play to try to open somebody up, or if they isolate someone and have them drive to the basket down just two. And if you're Caribou, you make them work, you go straight up, you challenge without fouling, because you don't want to give them the three-point play opportunity. So whatever Kyle Corrigan said to the Vikings in the huddle, these guys are coming back, out. they're saying their own things. <laughs> That's right. Guys, this is what we're doing. Bouchard exhorting them, come on. Sawyer Dupree saying no foul, no foul. Deafening in here. <laughs> Nate Mullen says, I wanted to take it out in front of my bench. And they said, no, no, you've got to take it in here. Agus looks. Carpenter for three. It's short. 
and the Caribou Vikings are your state Class B champions. Congratulations, Caribou. Fantastic effort on the defensive end there in the second overtime. They win that gold ball. First time in 50 years. Are you not entertained? What a gutty effort by the Caribou Vikings. What a gutty effort by the Capers of Cape Elizabeth. Carpenter had a good look at it for the win. The gold ball shot, and he just got front iron. He's going to see that shot in his dreams for years. These kids are physically drained, emotionally spent. Forty minutes of basketball, 32 regular, two extra sessions of four each. You see the caribou crowd they, there cheering on their Vikings. The handshakes um, between these guys have been sincere. They uh, they respect each other as opponents. This was. Uh, they all know they were just involved in an instant classic. <laughs> And just think, you know, <laughs> Austin Finland's going to want to become a post-grad. He's going to come back here to help because the rest of this team is underclassmen. Yeah, Theron Hand think. is the only other senior. Can I run it back one Excuse more time, me, Coach? Sarge is a senior. Finland really played well in that second half. He came to life with 11 second-half points. It's been so long they forgot they were supposed to take down the nets. That's right. if, if we were going to award an unsung hero of the game, I would award it to Sawyer Dupre as he battled Andrew Hartel on the defensive end. He drawed him away from the basket on the offensive end. He did his job, his role within the team. It was an enormous role within their game plan to earn this victory. They didn't expect him to score a whole lot, but if he could bother Andrew Hartel and there was enough bother going on. See Hartel's career at Cape Elizabeth comes to an end. A fantastic career for the senior center. Didn't have the ending he would have wanted. Watched the end of that second overtime from the bench, but he had a fantastic career. He played well in this game with 18 points. I'm sure he'll look back at his time at Cape Elizabeth and the boys' basketball program very fondly. Yeah, but this might be the one that got away. And the fouls were a problem for him. And whether they were problem calls or whether they were just the kind of thing you just go, that's basketball. But the officials are not the ones who controlled the outcome of this game in any stretch that we could see anyway. They allowed the kids to play the game and you know, certainly the beauty of our replay is that it establishes that the calls that were made were there. And I don't think they favored either team. So 49-47, Cape Elizabeth loses to Caribou and the Vikings <laughs> half a century later Get another goal ball. And Mike Thurston was in the house. It doesn't get a whole lot better than that, does it? I think everybody who's ever gone to Caribou High School was in the house today, <laughs> cheering on the Vikings. Susan Collins was in the house. That's right. How about Coach Kyle Corrigan? Hired, no varsity basketball coaching experience, age of 28 years old, to take over his former team, the Caribou Vikings. He not only brings them all the way to a state final, he knocks off Herman in the regional final. Herman had a 42-game winning streak. They get to the state final, and they're bringing the gold ball back to Aroostook County in the town of Caribou. Beginner's luck. <laughs> That's what it was. Beginner's luck. Parker Dupree waving it. The Austin Finland on the other end with tears in his eyes. He's going to catch up with him.
the Iron Men of the Caribou Vikings. Those guys logged a lot of minutes. Isaac Marker. Finland. You know, and, and I don't know who you'd go for your player of the game, but I'll, I'll tell you that the kid who I thought sparked the Vikings in the second half was Finland. You know, he, the enormity of the moment is oftentimes greater for those who are seniors because they're aware that this stops here. Yeah, he played very assertively in that second half. He came right out of the locker room yeah. to start the third quarter, scored five quick points, and showed his teammates, here we go, we're gonna do this, and they get it done. Let's go to the awarding of the hardware. Both communities should be proud of your efforts in reaching today's Class B state championship game. Presenting the awards and representing the Maine Principal Association Basketball Committee is Mr. Mark Keller, Assistant Principal and Athletic Administrator at Spruce Mountain High School, and Mr. Dan Hart, Principal of Guy E. Rowe Elementary School of Oxford Hills. At this time, we invite James Ray, the head coach of Cape Elizabeth High School, and his assistants, Kevin Fogg and Connor Hassan, to help present individual awards to the team members. Starting with the Cape Elizabeth managers, Jack Aceto. Casey Morang. The Capers sophomores, Nate Mullen. Quinton Morse. Finn McQueenie. Noah Pillsbury. The Cape Elizabeth Juniors, Jack Bassett. Liam Cutcannon. Vince Inhorn. Nolan Smith. Ladies and gentlemen, your Cape Elizabeth High School seniors, Emmanuel Hagos. Tanner Carpenter. Kyle Russell. Nicholas Aceto. Matt Codley. Aiden Willits. Andrew Hartel. And Sean O'Sullivan. Would the captains from Cape Elizabeth High School please come forward? On behalf of the Maine Principals Association, it is our pleasure to present to you this plaque emblematic of the Class B State Runners Up. Congratulations to Cape Elizabeth High School. At this time, would Kyle Corrigan, the head coach at Caribou High School, and his assistants, Jeremiah Fitzhaber, Ben Rosser, and Cody Herbert, please come forward to help present individual awards to team members. In
Introducing the Caribou High School team managers, Caitlin Nadu. Summer Rivera. Corey Herbert. Your Caribou High School team personnel, freshman Michael Brigman. The Caribou Sophomores, Sawyer, Sawyer Depre. Ethan Holtzworth. The Caribou High School Juniors, Alex Bouchard. Colin Caverhill. Jake Berkowski. Isaac Marker. Parker Depre. Ladies and gentlemen, your Caribou High School senior class, Theron Hand. Austin Fidlin. And Iffy Sargent. Would head coach Kyle Corrigan please come forward to accept the game ball? And would the captains from Caribou High School please come forward? On behalf of the Maine Principal Association, it is our pleasure to present to you the Class B State Championship Gold Ball. Congratulations on an outstanding season. The town of Caribou may be here. <laughs> a good portion of Aroostook County may be here. And the wait was worth it. The Caribou Vikings are the Class B boys state champions. Brian Seidlinger will talk with Coach Corrigan, maybe a couple of the players as well. We'll have that for you. When we return after this timeout. The 40th anniversary of high school basketball on Maine Public Television is made possible by... C.N. Brown Company, with 76 Big Apple stores throughout Maine and New Hampshire, proudly supports high school basketball. Online at cnbrown.com. Seeking a career change to get ahead or considering your next steps after high school? UMA is a great place to start with statewide access and affordable tuition. Hammond Lumber Company, a Maine family business serving contractors and do-it-yourselfers from 21 stores in southern, central, northern, and down east Maine. Welcome back to the Cross Insurance Arena in Portland, where we've just watched a full game and two overtimes to establish the Class B boys, victors, the Vikings of Caribou High School. Brian Seidlinger is down in the mass of humanity at the end of the arena here, hoping to catch, catch a, a conversation with Kyle Corrigan. That, that's right, Dave, I'm here with Coach Cor Corrigan. I've got the basketball team behind me, and behind them, I think I've got the entire town of Caribou. 
Coach, I, I don't even know what to ask you or if you would even have any answers. Two overtimes, probably the game of the tournament. You're a first-year coach, and you just won a state title. What do you say to all of that? Uh, I'm retiring. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. They, they joked with me the other day, said if we win, we gotta re you got to retire on top, and I said no way. Um, I'm really proud of my guys. They played really hard. Lots of credit to Cape. They hit some really big shots and some big moments, and it, it felt like we lost all momentum at time. But you know, our, our guys responded really well. I couldn't be any prouder of them. Can you talk a little bit about the journey, uh, beside the fact that it's 300 miles to get down here, but you had to beat a Herman team that hadn't lost in a couple of years. This Cape Elizabeth team has been here before. Can you just talk about these players and the journey that you've gone through this year with them. Oh, it's been a battle. It's been a lot of fun. You know, we started off the season three and three. I've said time and time before, I think the best thing that happened to us was losing at the buzzer um, in our sixth game of the season because that really turned things around. This was 16 in a row for us, so played really good basketball after that. And, uh, you know, they dug deep, they grinded, and couldn't be any happier, like I said. Are you exhausted now? How are you guys feeling? Are you guys tired? Because, because I'm exhausted watching it. I think everybody here is exhausted. Guys, congratulations. It was a tremendous game, a tremendous performance. Fellas, how does it feel to be state champs for the first time in 50 years? Let's go! Let's go! All right, Dave, that's it from the floor. The gold ball has a long trip back up 95 to Caribou. It'll seem like, it'll seem like a short trip, Bri. Well, Brandon Terrell, uh, first shot at the state championship game. Nice afternoon. That's a pretty good one. Don't go away, folks. Sir. We're going to be back here at 6 o'clock for the girls' double-A class uh, <laughs> Double A state championship game, and then the boys, Brandon and I, will be back for that one as well around 9 o'clock. State championship weekend here on Maine Public Television.